A welcome to this lecture. In the previous lectures, we had seen the concept, basic concepts of set theory. Then we looked at the concepts in real numbers, and then we looked at the sequences of real numbers. And an important property of real numbers was the completeness property of real numbers. Today we start looking at uh, the notions of relations and functions um, in mathematics. So let us start with looking at an example uh, of a scenario is that of a stock exchange. We know that on a stock exchange, uh, shares are bought and sold uh, and, and the persons who buy the shares are called traders and the activity of buying and selling is called trading of shares. So the scenario is that uh, on a particular stock exchange, uh, per, uh, shares of a particular company are being bought and sold by a certain uh, set of uh, traders. And uh, we want to, by the end of the day, we would like to represent this uh, data, the activity what has been done on that day. So when a particular uh, trader buys or sells a share, that will give you a number. So let us say X is a trader and N is the number of shares he has bought or sold. So that will give us the observations are um, summarized in a pair called N comma X, where N denotes the number of shares being traded by a particular trader X. So this motivates one to define uh, the concept of a ordered pair. So let us uh, define mathematically x and y with two sets. Then we define x comma y in round brackets x comma y where x belongs to an x and y is an element of y and such an object it will be called a ordered pair of elements of x and y. Note that in this pair this x is coming from the set X and Y is coming from the set Y. So there is a uh, the positions of uh, appearance of X and Y in this pair is um, being ordered as the first position comes from X and the second position comes from Y. That is why this is called a ordered is a pair in which the order is fixed. The first one comes from X, the second one comes from Y. So such a pair is called an ordered pair of elements of X and Y. The set of all ordered pairs is noted by this set X. This is called times or cross X cross Y. So X cross Y is the set of all ordered pairs of elements of X and of Y. This set is called the Cartesian product of the set X and Y or better uh, it is called uh, the Cartesian product of the set X with Y because there is a order so we should be careful. Right. So let us look at some examples of uh, these things. Let us say X is a set of um, English alphabet A, B and C and Y is a set uh, of numbers 1 and 2. Then what are the ordered pairs possible? We take one element A. Uh, of x and we can pair it with either 1 or 2. So when we pair it with 1, we get a ordered pair a comma 1. Similarly, when we pair it with 2, we get ordered pair a comma 2. Next we take the element b of the set x and pair it with the elements of y. So we get b comma 1 ordered pair and another ordered pair as b comma and finally, we take the element C from X and construct ordered pairs with 1 and 2 of Y. So that gives us ordered pair C comma 1 and C comma 2. So for the set X, A, B and C and the set Y 1 and of elements 1 and 2, the set of all ordered pairs X cross Y is consisting of these elements A1 a comma 2, b comma 1, b comma 2 and c 1 and c comma 2. So there are 6 elements in the set of Cartesian product of x with y. 
For example, in our example of the stock exchange, if X denotes the set of all trader tradable shares uh, of a particular company, and uh, uh, I think let us call it as a set uh, Y. Y denotes the, uh, X denotes the set of all tradable shares of the company, and Y let us change this X to Y because otherwise there will be a confusion. And Y denotes the set of all uh, traders of that exchange. Then for number of shares. X n belonging to X number of share traded by a trader Y in Y will give us an ordered pair n comma Y. So that is an element of X cross Y. So that is how uh, the ordered pairs and the Cartesian products come into uh, come into existence. But keep in mind X cross Y is not same as Y cross X. This is Cartesian product of X cross Y. Let us look at uh, uh, this example a bit more uh, explicitly. So, we had the set X which was equal to A, B and C and Y was equal to 1 and 2. So, we had X cross Y as a set of all ordered pairs. So, we had A comma 1, A comma 2, then we had the ordered pair B comma 1, B comma 2 and then we had the ordered pair c comma 1 and c comma 2 so these are ordered pairs so this is the cartesian product of x cross y let us look at what will be the set y cross x so that will be equal to now we have to pick up elements of y first and then form ordered pairs with elements of x so y has got two elements let us take one so this is one and its pairing with elements of x gives 1 a, next gives 1 b and next gives 1 c. And similarly with 2 element of y that gives a pair with a as 2 a and 2 with b and 2 with c. So, y cross x is the set of all ordered pairs of y with elements of x and that is 1 comma a. 1 comma b 1 comma c 2 comma a 2 comma b 2 comma c so that uh, clearly exhibits that x cross y in general is not equal to y cross x because x and y could be a totally different but keep in mind uh, is a nice observation that x and cross y has got six elements and same is the number of elements of y cross x that happens very more generally if x has got uh, m elements and y has got n elements then x cross y the number of elements will be equal to m cross n. But we will not have uh, opportunity of using this too much. So, let us come back to our study of ordered pairs of elements of x and elements of. The idea is that the complete trading information on a day can be summarized as a subset of x cross y right where x is the number of uh, uh, shares being traded and y is the set of all traders so that is the importance of the cartesian product x cross y so it signifies so subsets of x cross y signify some kind of relation activity happening between elements of x and elements of y so this motivates one to define uh, the concept of what is called a relation. Uh, we say R is a relation from x uh, to y or x with y if R is a subset of x cross y. This is not a very good word x and y, a relation from x, it should be better word is to y. So, a relation from x to y that means between elements of x and elements of y, the order is there, is a subset of x cross y. So, all uh, subsets of x cross y will be called as relations. If we if an element x y comma y belongs to R, so there is an ordered pair, we will say x is related to y. Okay? So, that is uh, that is how we read and understand it. So, let us look at uh, uh, various examples of relations. If x is any set and y is any other set, then x cross y itself 
is a relation, the Cartesian product itself. That means every element of x is related to some element of y, right? Because all ordered pairs are taken into account. Let us look at uh, the relation n comma x, where n is bigger than or equal to 10 and x belongs to x, right? That means we are looking at a subset of the natural numbers cross x. Uh, if you uh, would like to understand this example a bit more, let us say x is the traders, right, who are buying shares only. So, n will be positive. And so, this n comma x will signify, so this uh, relation will signify all those traders who have bought uh, at least 10 shares on a particular day of that company. So, that is the relation um, that all data will be captured in this set. So, x is a set of traders, n is the number of shares traded that day uh, and if that is bigger than or equal to 10. Another relation possible between uh, numbers uh, real numbers could be x comma y belonging to R2, where x is equal to y. Okay. This example does not have, uh, does not really say anything much towards uh, some activity relating to economics or so on, but that is a relation. Right? So, x is related to y if x is equal to y. Okay? Right. For example, 10 will be related to 10, but 10 will not be related to 5. Right? Okay. Let us look at another relation x comma y in R2. That means in this, these sets x is equal to y and equal to r. So, x and y are same sets. So, we are looking at the Cartesian product of r with itself. This is also Cartesian product of r with itself and the relation is x is related to y, right? x comma y belongs to R2 if x square is equal to, square of that number is equal to y. Another relation possible could be x and y in R2 says that x square plus y square equal to 1. This has some geometric significance namely the points on a circle. Right? x is related to y if x coordinate and y coordinate are points on the circle. But that is okay. Mathematically it is just uh, some relation between x and y. So, this is how you can construct more and more um, relations between sets. Next, we are going to look at some special kind of relations. A, let us have two sets x and y and let us say r is a relation um, from x to y. Then we say x y 1 and x y 2, if they belong to r, if it implies y 1 is equal to y 2 and this, this property uh, this relation has, then we say it is a function. So, a function is a special type of relation okay, with the property that whenever x is related to y1 and x is related to y2, then y1 must be equal to y2. That means, every element of x is related to one element of y. It cannot be related to more than one element of y. So, that means, each x is related to at the most one element of y. So, if x is related to two elements, it may not be related to any element, but if it is related, then y1 must be equal to y2. Such a relation is called a function. In this case, r is called as a function from x to y. So, it is a relation between elements of x and y and it has a special property that each element of x of x is related to one element of y, then we say r is a function, such a relation is called a function from x to y and we write it as f colon x right arrow, this is a arrow pointing towards the right y. Okay. So, in case uh, x is related to y, that means if this is a relation and x is related to y, so then in, in this terminology we will write it as x with a bar right arrow, right? That means x is related to y, or we also write f of x is equal to y. So, this is how uh, slowly we are developing the notion of a function and the language in which the functions are written. So, the set x is called the domain, 
So, what is the domain? That is the first part of the function or first part of the relation, it is coming from x. So, x is called the domain of the function and y is called the codomain of the function f. And this, the subset f of x, right? Look at f of x, namely all the points, elements of y which are related to some element of x that is called the range of the function. So, uh, a relation is a special type of function, uh, a function is a special type of relation in which every element of x is related to some element of y, right? And it is related to only one element of y, it cannot be related to more than one element. This x is called the domain and y is called the codomain of the function. The range is all the points of y which are related to some point of x are called uh, the range of the function. Let us uh, try to understand a bit more so that uh, the concept of uh, function is quite clear. Intuitively, let us uh, try to represent uh, geometrically a bit. This is the set x and this is the set y. You can uh, think of a function as some kind of a association f. What it does, it takes a point x and takes it to a point f of x that is y. So, f from x to y, it takes a point x and send it to y which is nothing but f of x. And a point x cannot go to two different points in y, it should go only to one point. So, uh, for every x there exists a unique y belonging to y such that f of x is equal to y. So, this x which is on this side is called the domain. So, this x is called the domain of this function and y is called the co-domain. So, not every point of y will be coming from a point x, that may not happen, right. So, some points of y come from points of x. So, what is the range of this function f is nothing but all those y belonging to y such that there exists some x belonging to x with f of x equal to y. Such a thing, uh, this set is called the range of the function. Let us, uh, let me give you a very simple example uh, so that uh, you understand. Uh, let us look at a function f from natural numbers to natural numbers. So, what are natural numbers? Recall these are numbers 1, 2 and this is also 1, 2 and so on. So, what is the function? Let me define the function to be f of n is equal to let us say n square. That means what? That means if I pick up a point n in the domain, then this n goes to f of n which is n square, right. So, what is the domain of the function? So, clearly every point uh, in the domain, so the domain is of f is n and for every n point in the domain, it goes to some unique element and that element is n square belonging to n. So, this is the function, its domain is f, codomain is n. So, what is the range? Range of f is equal to all numbers in the codomain that is n such that m is equal to f of n for some 
n. What does that mean? f of n equal to m square mean uh, f of n equal to m means this will happen only if m is equal to n square. So, what is the range of f is equal to n square n belonging to n, which is note it is a proper subset of n. So, the domain of this function is equal to n and the range of f is equal to all numbers for they are 1, right? 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square, 4 square and so on, which is a proper subset of n. So, codomain is something which can be bigger than the range of the function. Range is a part of the domain, it can be equal. We will see uh, later on when uh, these two are equal, we will look at some properties later on. So, uh, let us uh, continue the study of uh, functions, the definition of a function. So, consider the relation uh, integers cross x, a relation where x is the given set of traders, right. And then uh, we looked at uh, the pairs, right, uh, n comma x. That is, that means the whole set n comma x, uh, z comma z cross x, the Cartesian product of integers with x, this is not a function because we can have uh, uh, two different uh, uh, traders, say x1 and x2, buying the same uh, number of uh, shares, say 10. So, for, so, if this is a relation, then 10 comma x1 is possible and 10 comma x2 is possible when x1 is not equal to x2. That means, a number 10 in the domain can get associated with two different numbers in x. So, that is not uh, as such this is not a uh, function. So, this is not a function, but let us just change look at x cross z. So, what does that mean? Now, here x is the, num, uh, the traders and z is the number of shares they buy. So, each trader okay, x either he buys some shares, so that will be some positive number or he does not do anything, no activity, the number will be 0 or he sells something, so his number will be minus n. So, then this set x cross z, which is itself can be treated as a relation is also a function, right? because for every trader will either buy or no activity or will sell. So, for every trader there will be a unique number associated with it. So, that gives us a function at the end of the day. Right. So, uh, so these are some examples of functions. Let us look at uh, a relation R1 in R2, where the relation is x y is equal to. So, what is the relation? x is related to y if 4 x is equal to y. Is this a function? Yes, this is a function because for every x, what is the y it is related to? x is 4 x is equal to y, that means x is okay, related to y. So, there is only one possibility, right. If 4 x is equal to y 1 and also 4 x is equal to y 2, then of course, y 1 has to be equal to y 2. So, there is the function. Let us look at uh, the following. Another relation x y says that x square is equal to y. So, is this uh, a function? Can we say that if x square is equal to y 1 and x 2 square also is equal to y, can we say that x 1 uh, if sorry uh, if x 1 square is equal to uh, if x square is equal to y 1 and x 2 square is equal to uh, sorry I am uh, I am sorry. Let us uh, to check whether it is a function or not each element x must be related to a unique element in y. So, let us say x square is equal to y 1 is it possible that uh, 
some x square is also equal to some y2, right? That is not possible. Uh, so, let us just look at this slightly more carefully. So, the relation R1, R2 is x, y such that x square is equal to y. That means, x is related to y. Let us just indicate this way, if and only if x square is equal to y, right. So, um, it will be a function if x related to y 1, x related to y 2 should imply y 1 is equal to y 2. But this implies from here x square is equal to y 1. Is x is also related to y 2, then x square is equal to y 2. So, that implies y 1 is equal to y 2. So, this is actually a function. So, here is a typo that x is not a function is not true, this actually is a function. Let us, uh, uh, right. So, this is actually a function. Actually, it is an example of a function which is not 1, 1, so we will deal with this. Uh, what is happening here is there are two different x1 and x2 can get related to same element of y. So, that is okay, that is fine. So, uh, I think uh, we will do it uh, soon what is the concept of a 1 1 function. So, this is a function, there is a typo here, this is a function. So, let us look at uh, the next thing that we want to relate to a function is what is called the graph of a function. We want to represent uh, functions uh, as, as pictures. So, we want to give a geometric representation of uh, uh, functions. So, let us take a function f x to y, okay. is the domain is x, codomain is y. Its graph of the function is the set of all ordered pairs. So, x comma y, where y, what is y? y is equal to f of x, right f is a function. So, x will go to y. So, f of x goes to y, right? f of x is equal to y. So, graph is a set of all ordered pairs x comma f of x, x belonging to x. So, it is a subset of x cross y. So, graph is a subset of x cross y. Okay? So, we what we want to do is we want to represent this set Okay, this is a subset of x cross y geometrically and this is done as follows. If x and y are both subsets of real line, then uh, it gets a very good geometric representation namely as follows. What we do is x is equal to y is equal to r. So, the graph is going to be a subset of r 2. So, we will represent r 2 geometrically as points in the plane. So, R 2 is represented as points in the plane and what is the representation? The representation is we take a plane, we draw two lines, one horizontal line, another vertical line in the plane and wherever these two uh, lines uh, because they are one is horizontal, other is vertical. So, they are perpendicular to each other. So, they will intersect somewhere at a point, then point is called the origin. The horizontal line is called the x axis and the vertical line is called the y axis. To locate a point x y on R 2, okay, uh, in the, so given a ordered pair in R 2, how is the point located in the plane? What we want does is one moves on x units on the horizontal line and y units on the um, vertical line. So, that means, on x axis you move x units, on the y axis you move y units and you locate a point. So, that is a point um, which is associated with the ordered pair x comma y. So, x is called the this distance, the units you move is called the x coordinate and the other one is called the y coordinate. So, one writes it as p x y. So, here is the pictorial representation. In the plane, you take a vertical line and you take a horizontal line. So, this horizontal line is called the x axis, this vertical line is called the y axis. 
So, uh, the horizontal line is marked with units, right. So, this point uh, origin where they intersect is taken as 0, equidistant points 1, 2, 3 and so on, right. On the negative side, on this side, so that is a line that is basically the real line and similarly the real line here. So, here the real line is put as vertical line, so up is positive, going down is negative. So, if you take a point P, okay, so if the coordinates, if the point ordered pair is x comma y, to locate it you go x units along x axis and y units along y axis, you reach a point, so that is a point P. And conversely every point gets a um, unique, quad, unique ordered pair by moving down that is the y coordinate and moving along x axis is the x coordinate. So, uh, R2 uh, is given a geometric representation at the points in the plane via x axis and y axis. And the collection of these points in the plane given by for a function the graph, right, if you locate all these points uh, using the graph of the function all these ordered pairs that gives a visualization of the graph of the function. So, we will continue in the next lecture.